Hello everyone, Ben here. I have the world's robot with me and I wanted to go ahead and make a explanation video post worlds. Uh, I learned a lot from other people's explanation videos and this thing won somehow. So uh, I'd like to talk about it a bit. One of the unique features about this robot is the drop down arm. And I know a lot of people probably have questions about it. It really helped us have an advantage. So essentially the idea here was that the goal rush was extremely important and we needed a way to grab the yellow goal first, but um, the grab and pull back, I had some challenges with, I couldn't get that to work. I actually tried prototyping it. And so the idea was that if I tilt it, when another claw comes at it, it actually blocks it. So this drop down arm actually, well, right here, it starts too far back. So I put this pin down in here. And what that actually does is start it up a little bit further. So then when Autumn would start here, let me actuate it. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. It drops down like this. It rides the ground and actually kind of has a passive lock, clicks in there. And then when it actually, what button is it? Wrong one. Tilts then the other team can't grab it. So as long as we're there first and it tilts, we should win the goal. So this beats a lot of goal covers and such. And if anybody else had an arm or something, we would at least tie. So that was the idea and it ended up working pretty good. It was only like 0.7 to the short goals, but it was good enough. Uh, this one cylinder needed a lot of air to do that. And making this front part pretty light was also a challenge and tilt, but overall managed to get it to work. Then when driver control would start, those would both would actuate, or actually during Auton, and then get the goal in the front claw. So, pretty interesting. Uh, the pin solution was also pretty nice. So. As far as for the rest of the robot, um, another interesting feature was how it was pretty well ring-proofed. So, had these little covers up front here, so still climb, but a ring totally can't get in. Uh, from the side, these panels also are nice slide past other people, decorative sponsors. As for the bottom of the robot, there were these panels like right here where my thumb is, and those, a ring could get wedged up there, so that stopped it. Virtually the whole robot could get off of any ring anywhere under it, unless it was perfectly centered and like high centered, so that was nice. Uh, same thing with all the wheels, kind of helped with the lower center of gravity. But also if there was a ring in the middle, this is kind of hard with one hand, with all the different wheels, it could slide off better. It's hard with one hand. So it looked like it was slipping, but if I was also moving the other joystick. So yeah, a lot of wheels also helped with making it ring proof. Um, back lift is pretty typical. I have a different video where it's like the two piston Mogo Mac joke video talking about it. Same thing, smaller, lighter. Oh, another thing with the drive train, ended up going with high strength gears. And that was just because I had a low strength gear brake on me once and I did not want that happening again. Down in here, motors compact, got the inertial sensor, batteries in a good place too, can't get unplugged, is secure. Tank placement further to the back, helping with center of gravity. We come back up here to the front lift. A decent amount of work went into this. Well, the lift, but the claw, a lot of work went into this. When I actually made the first locking claw, you can like see it on the Kalahari live stream before the 9999V video. I modeled it after this toggle clamp right here. And so that when it closed, it would be locked in place. And so, Popping this into VEX was interesting. I used to have the locking mechanism on the other side, but then switch it around. So that works pretty well. Also ran single tooth, found it didn't have any problems. So may as well, then I can tie covers or something and just made it a little easier. Also supported the C channel here because it bent once. Uh, let me restart the drive program so I can open it. So when it was open, uh, could grab a goal with ease and then it was locked in 
never came out. I spent a ton of time developing this. The only person to ever get a goal out when it was a good grab and locked was Armand from uh, Blackout Robotics. So good job, I guess he's correct. Uh, as far as the lift, banding on the inside, band also got plucked off once, so moved it to the inside to be more protected. Uh, decently long, I wanted a longer lift, so one, we could hold goals above other people, but also it stopped, um, like if we were down goals three to four, we could still try and steal goals. Uh, like if somebody held a goal above your head, you were basically done for. So had to gear it a bit slower. It ended up being one to seven, 100 RPM. But since it was longer, the time to bring a goal from ground to platform level actually ended up being about the same. Oh, I also printed this flag on the brain. I just drew like 14 rectangles before Worlds because I thought it would be cool. Ring mech hood was kind of bad. It worked a lot better on the other robot, even though I literally just brought it over and copy pasted, I guess, onto this robot. It was getting like 50% accuracy in dome, but it still filled up the goal, so got the job done. Overall, the goal of this robot was to be lighter, faster for worlds, and it also had room for the Gold Rush mech, which really helped out. Uh, as far as ring mechanism, uh, I wanted to do a hinged intake. It looked like those had good results, but compared to my old robot, it was a lot less steep and I did that on purpose so it can intake a lot better. So overall, it would just, well, if it drove into it, I guess, it would just grab really quick. So it would jam occasionally and I would have to reverse it, but it wasn't too bad. Just actually drilled out a six tooth up here and had it just spin on this high strength shaft. So that worked out well for spacing. Uh, I used the normal chain in between because I actually found that like this part could be used like a scoop. And so when it goes down in, so it's almost like a hook system as well as flaps. Whereas if there was tank tread in between here, that's also wider, it wouldn't hook in as well. Got the little funnels. Once again, the protectors to not get ring proofed. Cylinders for Mogo Mac. Brain placement was a little bit exposed, but really light to attach it there. So ended up doing that. Also got the limit switch for Auton selecting. So that was pretty nice. Uh, what am I missing? Oh yeah. Uh, there were two standoffs on the claw and these actually helped for picking up the toggle if it was knocked over. Here, wait, this is hard to do with recording. So let me put the lift down. One-handed drive the robot. Here's the goal. If the robot drives up in it, this is so difficult. And then it would clamp down. Those standoffs could actually support it, hold the goal on its side. So that was also nice. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask in the comments. Oh, and I did want to quickly talk about controls. So this was my lift up button, lift down. Uh, this button right here operated the claw so then that could fall out. And then I had a shift key. And so then when I would press this, it would operate the back lift, press this, it would turn the ring back on, stop it reverse and so shift key was nice to keep my fingers on the joysticks at all time and still keep driving so yeah as i was saying uh any questions ask them in the comments i will do my best to reply and good luck in spin up